welcome to The Good Life. And this is a special Thanksgiving program. It is program. a special Thanksgiving program. Oh, program. <laughs> well, why don't you tell everybody Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. You know, we have so much to be thankful for. Yeah. Even the very breath that we breathe comes from the Lord. And the Bible says, God is good. Amen. And his mercy endures forever. Amen. We have a good God. And this is a very special program. So well, we haven't welcomed you. Thank Jared. you. Yes. Thank you Welcome, so much. Jerry. Thank you. To, oh, thank <laughs> you for having me on. And we, like I said in the beginning, we don't normally do this, you yeah. know, just promo somebody for mm -hmm. a whole hour. We don't mm -hmm. do that. But we thought on this occasion of Thanksgiving, and just the time yeah. of the presence of the Lord. I mean, we just wanted to give you time and Him time and talk about what's coming up. I think it's going to be, well, I don't want to tell you what it is, but it's a concert. It's a concert. Uh, it's really a worship event. We've, we've called it a Christmas worship concert. Mm -hmm. If you'll notice, the name of this Christmas album is a Christmas worship album. Right. I mean, everything Terry does is worship, worship. you know that. And it's going to be at the Hilton on December the 4th, coming up just in a few days. Mm -hmm. uh, you can still register. In fact, those that are across the whole southeast, people are calling. I got a call uh, just yesterday. A uh, couple's coming from Orlando, and they said, put us down for the hotel. We're going to stay overnight. So you can get a package for the weekend if you want to uh, stay at a beautiful Hilton Hotel at the West Shore Hilton. And uh, they're given half-price rooms for mm. people that want to come in for the concert. So when you call the Hilton, just say, I want the Terry McAlmond Worship Concert Special, and they'll give you the half-price rate. And then sign up for a beautiful banquet. We're doing a banquet with Terry and Liz from 1.30 to 3.00. So people that want to sit down and eat with them and really meet them can do that. And then the concert's at 3.30 in the Sunday afternoon. And we made it Sunday afternoon uh, because we want people to be able to leave their church after the morning service, go have lunch, hopefully the banquet with us, yeah. go to the concert and still make it back to their church at, in the evening if yeah. they want to. The concert's going to, going to go till about 5, maybe 5.15 and then they can still be in their Sunday evening service and just have a great Sunday afternoon experience of worship. Amen. And I'm excited yeah. about worship, Bob. <laughs> you <laughs> no, can we probably are tell. Too. Well, you know, the worship has been such a vital part of our ministry. Right. Uh, it's just, uh, we've done so much street evangelism and outreach. We never do an event in the city without at least 30 to 45 minutes of worship. Just the last Saturday, we did an event with a local church. Went out to a park. I'd done the training in the morning, the School of Evangelism, and then we'd set up the worship. We worshiped, and a portal came down from heaven. Mm -hmm. A I window of heaven opened up under that. And there was a skateboard park right next to where we were. <coughs> and the kids started coming over into the presence of the Lord. Wow. We had 21 kids come from that skateboard park and get saved under nah. that shelter. Isn't that they just come true? two or three at a time. It was the worship that had created yeah. an atmosphere. You're I talking about that. an atmosphere. So. Sure. Yeah. And that's what it does. And certainly that's what Terry brings. Yes. If anybody brings worship, and yeah. well, I, I know you want to talk about is growing up. Yeah, I do. But you know, that to me is a true worshiper. Mm -hmm. When they always want Jesus to be glorified, yeah. they're always pointing to him. Because Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw them into me. And he really does. You know, we have several of his CDs, and mm -hmm. we love to listen because that's all you hear. Mm -hmm. And when you hear Jesus being glorified and magnified, there's just that spirit of worship where you want to stop what you're doing mm -hmm. and lift your hands and just worship. So, And don't yeah. let anybody tell you that CDs don't wear out. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> we've, we've worn out a lot of CDs, especially of Terry McAlphin. <laughs> and uh, you wanted to talk about his growing up. Well, yeah, because I just thought it was so interesting about, you know, a lot of people don't know this, and I just like knowing it. You know, that when he was three, he was like a child prodigy. There was, he had such an amazing ability at three years old to play the piano. And then as an adolescent, even, you know, when he played in church in early adult years, in the early adult years, he said that 
the Spirit of God would come on him as he worshipped, that he would just get lost in God, that his, his body would tremble, and he said his hands, it would be hard to hold his hands on the keys. And that's the anointing. That is. Me. That's yeah. the anointing. That's a true worshiper. Mm. So it goes on. You know a lot about his life, too. Well, you know, <clears throat> uh, to see Terry uh, raised back up in ministry again and restored, yes. uh, w he went on our radio and television network online with us just about a year ago. And God has just reestablished his ministry with a greater anointing. Uh, you know, Terry went through some issues. We may want to talk about those because people may have questions about that. Mm -hmm. But just to say that, you know, God's grace is sufficient. Mm -hmm. The grace of God is so powerful. And uh, uh, Terry takes full responsibility for what's happened. And he wasn't going to get back into ministry. Uh, he actually said, you know, I'm just not going to do it. And an intercessor called up and said, Terry, God spoke to me. You are to re-enter the ministry. This is after two years of restoration. And, and he says, I don't know. He said, it was a, it was a hard experience for me. I, I disappointed Christ so badly. And, and he, got, he, he was repentant, came back, and God has just given him a double anointing. In fact, he's going he's gonna to introduce a new CD at our concert. He just completed it. Wow. And it's with full orchestra and piano. And he said, Jerry, this will, he, he, it'll blow you away. He said, it's way beyond anything I've done so far. Wow. He said, God just came into that studio with that orchestra, and he said everybody could feel it. Something unusual was happening. And that anointing is, is on his music, and it's mm -hmm. going to be introduced at our concert. So uh, you come ready to maybe buy some Christmas gifts, you know, for your <laughs> yeah. friends, uh, some, of these, some of these albums. And then, of course, the beautiful Christmas album is, is also available. But I, I want to mention the power of worship, uh, if we have yeah. just a moment or two yeah. to talk. Uh, you know, the key to the Gentile harvest is in Acts 15 where James was uh, reflecting on some Old Testament scripture when uh, Paul and Barnabas came back and Peter came back and they all reported the same thing, the gospel's falling on the Gentiles. Yes. And uh, James got up and said, uh, hath not the Lord said, I will restore the tabernacle of David that all the Gentiles might seek me. What is the tabernacle of David? It's the presence of God being released in an open tent which was unusual. It wasn't usual in Israel. The ark was always kept in the Holy of Holies. But now there's an open tent. If you're an Ethiopian businessman, you could walk up to that tent and be in the presence of God, even though you weren't a Jew. Mm. And so it was that presence of the Lord that David brought into Jerusalem that he knew was a key to Israel's future glory and victory. David understood Amen. the presence of God. Right. He did. He was a psalmist. Amen. And he knew the power of worship to deliver a nation. And I believe, you know, it says in the book of Acts chapter 2 something really interesting. It says the day of Pentecost was fully come. Then it says, and the room where they were meeting was filled. You know the last thing that got filled on Pentecost was the people? Yeah. <laughs> we often think Pentecost was the filling of the people. It was the filling of the earth with the glory of God at a specific time. And there's a group of pastors in this city of Tampa, and I believe in the whole south, East, where this, these stations are going out in CTN, there's a release right now of the glory of God on earth that's happening with the church. You're seeing it on your nightly revival. I there is that. something, there is a fullness of time that has come Amen. for us, for the church. I really yeah. believe that. I do and just like the book of Acts, and I believe Terry holds part of the key to that in releasing worship for cities. Mm. And that's why this event on December the 4th is going to be so important for the city of Tampa. We have five pastors, Bob, that, that are going to read a proclamation over Tampa Bay. And Thank I know your you stations Jesus. go out through all the southeast. But they have put a proclamation together, believing that with Terry's anointing and music, they can release something in the city that's going to change the atmosphere of Tampa Bay. Mm. Is this exciting? It is exciting. We and you know, so with, with the GOP convention and yeah. all that, I just can't imagine what God's going to do. Oh, me I know, too. I know. <laughs> I cannot time. imagine. But God's <laughs> going to pour out His Spirit. Not that if you're a Democrat, it doesn't gonna, matter. It doesn't make does any not. difference. He's going to pour out His Spirit to anyone that will welcome Him. That's right. And that's the whole key is wel welcoming Him yes. into your life and into your family and won't you do that today 
on this Thanksgiving Day, say, we welcome you, Lord Jesus. We welcome you. We thank you for all you're doing. And we welcome you. We praise you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I believe it's going to happen, Jerry. I, do I just... We do. There's just everything coming together. It is coming together. The whole re revival that's on nightly with... Praise God for CTN. I, I tell you, my wife and I wake up every morning. It's automatically set in our recorder <laughs> <laughs> with Bright House. And Andrew Womack comes on at 6 o'clock. Yeah. And then Joseph Prince at 6.30. We never start a day without CTN. And <laughs> I hope you're really faithfully supporting this great, great ministry of, of this station because this is a work that God has called. And you are so much a part mm -hmm. of what God is doing, I, I believe, yeah. in this hour. Praise God for CTN. I just wanted to put that in. Yeah. Because <laughs> we are blessed. We're blessed with, with this, this network. It's yeah. powerful. And uh, by the way, I want to mention again that I think it's important, and you pray about coming to this, this concert. It's not just a concert. It is a worship event, and it's going to be held in the central location at the, right by the airport right. here in Tampa. So if you want to fly in, you don't even have to rent a car. They'll haul you right from the airport right over to the hotel, and you can stay overnight at a discount rate, uh, half price, in fact. Hilton is doing for us uh, for the Terry McCollin concert and, and just come and be a part of this event. Be a part of what God is, is doing here with this, with this time of releasing His glory. And it, it, it's, it is. It's Amen. Glory. And we're putting it in the Christmas theme because, you know, we thought, what better? I mean, here's this beautiful album that Terry's got. And by the way, this is wonderful. He's got some <laughs> songs. And, you know, we're calling it Celebrate the King. Yeah. Because, uh, can I just read something out of the Psalms yes. real quick? This is so exciting. It says, I will extol thee, O God, my King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. <laughs> I will bless thee and praise your name forever and ever. And then it goes over here to verse 10. I love this. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you. And they shall speak of the glory of your kingdom mm. and talk of your power and make known to the sons of men your mighty acts and the glorious majesty of your kingdom. Oh, don't you like it? Yes. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and, sounds and like dominion. A, sounds like a song to me. <laughs> and dominion endureth throughout all generations. So we're calling it Celebrate the King and we're actually starting off with a new cut from, from Terry's album, uh, of this piano album, and it's the Exodus. He said, Jerry, oh. God told me to re-record the Exodus. And so wow. we're having Jewish dancers come in, we're having banners. Wow. Uh, a major church in the area is providing beautiful banners. I didn't uh, know you were doing all that. Well, we're, we're going to introduce the king. <laughs> yeah. You know, oh, and we're making man. a dress up event. You can even wear a tux if you want. Uh, you can come formal t for Jesus. Not to be a show or anything, but we want to do it to honor Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're encouraging people to dress up a little, you know. Yeah. Florida churches are so informal, aren't they? Yes. They are. I, I mean, I could <laughs> preach in Bermuda shorts in some churches, I'm telling you. But here we want to make it a little bit of a, a just an, a dress-up event for Jesus. And uh, a kind of a great okay, dating okay. event, by the way, a beautiful dating event. If you want to bring your wife to the banquet, uh, it's a good dating event. How and, about a girlfriend? Well, a girlfriend, <laughs> yeah, if, if you're not you, married. Or, or fill a table up. Just fill a table up and say, we're going to come and we'd just like to be with Terry and Liz and meet them and, and uh, be close to them before the concert. Before How the many at a table? Uh, there are six people at a table. So oh. if you want to do a table with you and your friends, uh, it, it, it's going to be fun. And we, we have a limited seating, only, uh, only seating, only 150 uh, people are going to be allowed to come to the banquet. So the first 150 that register, uh, so just go online, and I, I believe there's some information that they're putting on, up right. on, on where people can register online for us. Yeah. But, um, uh, you know, just the worship alone. You know there are two themes of heaven's worship? Two themes. Two themes. And, you know, I've, I've studied in the history of the church, the greatest songs are built around these two themes. You know what the two themes of heaven worship are? What are you, it's got Revelation be 4, worthy is a lamb to receive glory and honor and might and dominion and power. They're worshiping the lamb, for he has created all things. You know the first theme of heaven's worship is the creative power of Christ. And what are some of the greatest songs of creation? How great thou art. Yeah. Why have songs endured in the life of the church? I mean, songs come and go, but why are the great songs celebrate his creative power? He's yeah. a marvelous God. Now I was reading earlier, he has pleasure in his creation. 
And the second theme is this, worthy as a lamb, Revelation 5, to receive glory and honor and might and dominion and power, for he's redeemed us by his blood. Amen. Wow. The blood of the Jesus blood. is the second main yeah. theme of heaven's worship. Now, yes. that's, what, that's what's happening in heaven now. Uh -huh. So Amen. when you write songs and, and sing songs that, that, that really join in heaven, it's exciting, isn't it? Yeah. It is. You know, one of the sad things is the hymnals have taken out the blood yeah, in many true. areas, many denominations even. There's no more blood songs. They wow. say, we don't want the, that bloody this and that. That's not the thing. It is the most magnificent, Amen. wonderful That's creation right. of God in His blood. The blood that gives us life. That's right. Yeah. The blood that Jesus shed for us. Amen. Because the scripture that's says, the without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. Amen. And that's why he came, to shed holy blood on that cross for our sin. Amen. Praise God. Yes. There's nothing more beautiful than the blood of Jesus. And I know maybe that's a stretch for some of you, but it really isn't. It's the blood of Jesus. Amen that has done all this for us. That's and, you know, that's with, only when we take the communion. And, mm. I mean, it's in everything. It is. And it's so wonderful. It <laughs> is. Amen. <laughs> well, heaven celebrates that blood <laughs> because right. heaven's in awe that that blood can deliver people from demons, yes. heal people from sickness, yes. totally cleanses us from our sins. Amen. You know that blood is so powerful that it's already paid for all of the sins of over six billion people. Never right. Anything. Paid in full. Yep. That's how powerful that blood is. Think of that. Yes. Amen. That, that's an awesome thought. It is. Hitler's sins were paid by the blood. He just never received it. Yeah. See, Jesus' blood is so efficacious, it has the potential of setting every soul free on the universe that's, that's right. ever been born. That's right. how powerful that blood is. I know. Why should we sing about it? Yes. <laughs> Get me excited uh. here. <laughs> and I agree, you know, I agree. Terry's songs are so focused on Jesus. Yeah. I, I walked into a home in uh, 1985 in Seattle, Washington, and uh, uh, they had Terry's music on. I'd never heard of Terry McCallman. And I walked into that home and it was like something hit me when I walked in. I said, ooh, I said, who, who's, who's singing? And they said, Terry McCormick, I've never heard of him. And, and I said, man, what is this? And, and I went into a bedroom where they were keeping me. I was staying there for a revival at a pastor's house. And I began to weep. I couldn't stop weeping. It was just like the Holy Spirit came on me. And I said, what is this music that has this kind of an anointing that just takes me into the presence of God. Yeah. And, and it was exciting. And from that time on, I, I was excited. I bought everything that Terry <laughs> put out, you know. And, uh, and so it, it's going to be a fun, fun worship time over there at the Hilton. It's going to be a wonderful celebration. Amen. Jesus is king. We're going to take a break, and we're coming back with more of Terry's wonderful music. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're here with wow. Terry Brandt. We appreciate that great music. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And Jerry, tell us about your ministry. Um, we've talked about Terry's ministry, but we don't know about your ministry. Well, we have a ministry called Action Evangelism. It started in 1972. We've, we've been around a long time. Uh, God uh, has raised us up to, to go to the nations. We're in 17 nations right now. We have national directors in these different nations. We uh, we have 37 uh, Kingdom Life Bible Institutes now around the world in these different nations, raising up national pastors to do remote village churches. And then we have teams going to remote villages to win them to Christ. Our uh, teams win an average of a thousand souls a month to the Lord each and start wow. two village churches a month. Now, these are not big churches. These are, these are village churches. Sure. And so we're very, very effective. We win souls just night and day. That's our passion, too, so we're on the same in chapter. But here in America, God, I was on television nightly for quite a few years up with Dr. Ron House. I don't know if you knew Ron, oh, Channel absolutely. 42. Absolutely. And I had a re regular nightly program on his, his channel there. And God spoke to me to, through a woman from Possum Trot, Tennessee. <laughs> Really? <laughs> Possum, her, Trot. Possum Trot, Tennessee. Her name was Mom Taylor. And I was interviewing her one night on my 
television program, and she pointed her finger over and she said, Jerry, God's calling you to the streets of San Francisco. Well, the station, you know, was in Concord, yeah. right outside of San Francisco. And I, I honestly told her on the broadcast, I said, you know, Mom, I don't have time to go to the streets. I said, I am lined up two years ahead in meetings. I, and she took her bony little finger and said, you don't want to be like Jesus, do you? <laughs> right on my, this is my broadcast, come on. Hello. But this is a woman of authority. And on the way out of the television studio, she stopped me at the door and said, you're not going anywhere, young man. She said, until I lay hands on you. She had a ministry in Pasadena called Pass It On, where she helped the homeless. Hmm. She laid her hands on me, and guess what? Two weeks later, I'm on the streets of San Francisco. Wow. <laughs> and I just said on the television program, I said, if everybody wants to come out and help us hand out food and clothing, just join us. And I gave a place on a Methodist steps out there, down, right near downtown uh, San Francisco. And I figured nobody would show up. I was kind of hoping nobody would so I could just get this over. <laughs> I got there over 150 people. Wow. We're standing on the steps with food and clothing. And they were saying, Jerry, thank you. We want to go with you to help the homeless. Well, that began our ministry of outreach to the needy and the homeless. And we've been doing that now for 26 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, mobilizing churches to go to their community and help the needy. And then I do a training along with that in evangelism. And then we take them out and they do it, yeah. just like we did last Saturday. It's a fun thing. So yeah. action evangelism, our mission statement is, is equipping the church to win the city with the gospel of the kingdom. And so we're... We're an equipping ministry, and we would like to release people to ministry. Mm. That's, that's pretty much it. But worship has been a very vital part of our yeah. ministry. Has anyone ever told you that Jesus loves you <laughs> and he has a wonderful plan <laughs> for your life? Oh, I love that phrase. Don't you love that? Yeah. Isn't that so simple, it's true. beautiful, simple yeah. way to present the gospel? And it was given by God. Yeah, yeah. It That's was. the most miraculous part of it. It is. And we know the the lady that received it from God. Yeah. And I was, I was going by a 7-Eleven just, just recently, and I, a little black gal standing behind the counter, and nobody's in there, and I, I just, I told her that. I said, you know, I looked right in her eyes. I said, you know, I got a word for you, and a good word. She says, I need a good word. And I said, you know that Jesus loves you? But I said, that's not all. God has a plan for your life. And, and her lip began to quiver a little bit. And, and then, and then she began to cry, and I said, mm -hmm. "I said, are you okay?" She said, "She says, you know, I, I need to come back to God." I mean, that phrase is anointed. That is an anointed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you can see. That's the truth. Well, we've well, got more music. Oh, okay. <laughs> Terry McAlvin is going to, and this is really a worship wow. song. <laughs> the presence of Jehovah. Mm. And wow. Let this bring yeah. you in the presence of God. Well, I hope this will be your greatest Thanksgiving. Mm. And there's one way you can be sure it'll be your greatest. And I'm going to ask Jerry to tell really what Jesus means to us. Oh, I thank God for his blessing and, and his Amen. great intervention in our lives. And we just thank him. And so, Jerry, I'm going to ask you to... Uh, talk to the people for a few minutes and tell them about all this music. Well, well, just to mention, and I want to thank you again uh, for letting me come on the broadcast. I know it's been a little different for your <laughs> broadcast. Uh, the concert with Terry is going to be December the 4th at 3.30 at the Hilton West Shore. Uh, you can still register if we sell out the first event, which is at 3.30. Terry's agreed to stay for a second concert at 7 o'clock in the evening. So we'll make sure you get to hear Terry one way or another. So uh, uh, go to WATV Network and you can register right online. If you want to come to the banquet at 1.30 to 3 to meet Terry and Liz, we, we invite you to do that. Yeah, you know, I just want to repeat what has been repeated so many times on this broadcast, but it never, never gets old. And that is this. You know, I, I always present this kind of this way. There are three things. First of all, Jesus loves you. He loves you so much. And he's demonstrated that love by giving his life, giving his life to you. And secondly, you are lost without him. First of all, is his love. Secondly, you're lost. You're separated from him. But he's made a way back to the Father for you. Isn't that exciting? It says in 1 Peter 3.18, Christ has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Mm. God has made a way back to himself through his son. 
That is love. And that way is so perfect because Jesus completely fulfilled all righteousness. He kept the law in every point that he might be the perfect sacrifice for you. But thirdly, you must receive him. You must receive his life. Invite him into your heart, would you right now? Just invite him into your heart. Say, thank you, Jesus. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, Father, thank you so much for loving me. I receive you right now in my life. Come into my heart. Wash my sins away. Thank you, Father, for your great love and demonstrating that love to me. I receive Christ now as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. Amen. Now I want to say this to you. God perfectly forgets your sins. Is God perfect? It says he buries your sins in the depths of the sea and he remembers them no more. You see, God is so perfect, he's going to perfectly remove your sins from you forever by the blood of Jesus. He'll never bring them up again. Now, people might, your wife might, your husband might, your friend might, but God will never bring those sins up that are under the blood of Jesus. Can you celebrate on this Thanksgiving? Amen. Can you say, thank you, God, that you have made a way for me to be in fellowship with you? Amen. Oh. Amen and amen. And I want to see you there at the banquet. Mm-hmm. We're, the yeah, there, we're going to actually concert. have uh, two banquets I want to see you at. Mm-hmm. An- another one is the banquet of the Lord. Mm-hmm. In that day, they're going to have a great banquet too. But I want to see you before that time. And, it, and again, if you're out of town and you want to come and spend a, a little vacation or... Just have a wonderful time. Fly in and go to Jerry's website. It's been on the air. And you'll find uh, everything you need to come and, and be with us. So if you're coming from out of state or someplace, this is a great time. I'd love to meet you. Uh, and we'll talk about God. Amen. The goodness of the Lord. (laughs) Talk about God. Yes, and His goodness. Well, we thank you all for being with us on this Thanksgiving. We thank you, Jerry, for coming and sharing with us. And we're just going to have a hallelujah time together. Well... All I can say is happy Thanksgiving to everybody. <laughs> yes, amen. Mm-hmm. I mean. Honey, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thank Thanksgiving you. to you. <laughs> and Mariana, your wife. Yes. Well, how much time we have? We have five seconds? Fifteen seconds. <laughs> well, we just want to impress upon you. Come. Mm-hmm. Come this uh, day of rejoicing. God bless you. We'll see you on the next Good Life.